Good evening from Katowice. We have five players left in this tournament. We started with 32. And I can't believe we're only left with five now, but we will, by the end of tonight, only have four, sadly. One of them will be eliminated shortly in our last quarterfinal of the evening. Joining me on the desk to conclude day three of the tournament is in control, Maynardi and Rotterdam. Maynardi. 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 Is there... Uh, did you pronounce the E by any chance? <laughs> uh, I, I don't I, think so. But I never have, and no one else has, but thanks. Where'd you guys get your shirt, by the way? Uh, awesome. Well, we both went shopping together last time we were in LA, so at BlizzCon. Yeah. Very Actually, cool. I went all the way to Down Under, you know. I just hopped in <laughs> LA hey. and bought a shirt let's with Maynard. Cheap this age appropriate. 16 please. hour journey to get a <laughs> shirt with my friend Maynard. That's good prices. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, know, it, it's been a long day, it's been a long <laughs> broadcast, exciting matches. Uh, but, I, you know, I also want to give some appreciation and shout out to the community. Uh, it's been really cool getting all the feedback. There was, <laughs> there was a Maynard appreciation thread, uh, one talking about Rotterdam's knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, there was a Funka thread. Unparalleled. You're right. And the Red Eye, the big one. Several about Red Eye, why Several. we love him, and we do. We, we love do. him. We do. And, uh, and you know, also a, a Valdez name thread. Just every, almost, almost everyone got a thread. Almost everyone got quite a bit of appreciation. But Sean, Nathanius, and I, not a single one. It's, <laughs> it's been. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's you know, Jeff. It's it's tough being the bad guy sometimes. Oh. You gotta be the villain. Esports e needs a villain. You know, I, I, mean, I have all of the StarCraft knowledge up there that I just push away. I'm like, no, they need jokes. They need banter. <laughs> <laughs> they need something else. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> like, yeah. And I, I, I Based feel, Mike Morheim, I'll do this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel in a similar boat because sometimes I feel like I could just, you know, take this headset off and not stand here and just walk off into the sunset. Walk off. <laughs> no, 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 but no. like the thing is, though. Walk off and go commentate the games myself. But Ap no. Apollo already got a threat before this tournament started. Did he? Be because it, it was kind of the same as always, you know. It's great to have Apollo hosting, but yeah, does but ESL really need to use their the best, best commentator as and their that's host? Well, that's, that's kind that's of funny Kalaris because there's only two of us. It's me and Kolaris, and Kolaris isn't casting. Yeah. So <laughs> like, I'm kind of put in a difficult situation here. Um, so I'm happy to be hosting that alongside with you, Jeff. Yeah, and you're maybe, doing great. Maybe if we do a good job for the rest of this game and tomorrow, maybe yeah. the community will like us one day. I mean, mm. cer I don't know. certainly mm. the lady that's been pulling my tears out of my pillow would appreciate it. You know what I mean? Just we love night. you guys too. Uh, I know it's a, a one-way love We train, haven't made an appreciation thread for them is what it boils down to. I get it. We didn't do one for you, you don't do one for us, I get it. <laughs> I understand now. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at the bracket as we are almost finished with our StarCraft action for today. Snoot is in the semi-finals with Paul and Nurcio, who will be playing tomorrow in the Spodek Arena. Right now, though, is a big game for a laser. I think it's safe to say, boys, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I'm happy to be wrong. So Laser's probably biggest game that he's played in his career right now. A chance to play in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of fans. Oh yeah. If only he can just beat a couple of time StarCraft champions. It's not too much. Probably the most difficult guy in the tournament. Probably. Probably. A uh, very, very difficult task. But as I mentioned before we went to the break, he feels confident. It's ZVZ, yeah. bro. He should. And I mean, it's funny as well, because not too long ago, we were here in Poland for WCS Season 3 2015, and the deciding match of, I think it was Group E, but it doesn't really matter which group it was, round of 16, was Elaser versus Hydra. Elaser won yeah. the first one, all nine of us predicted that one <laughs> wrong, and then suddenly Elaser's like, hey guys, I can beat Hydra. But then in the end, Hydra won the best of three that mattered. So yeah. in a way, this is a second shot, but obviously this series is bigger. This is already quarterfinals. <laughs> Back then it was round of 16. And being the championship, obviously there's a lot of money on the line, the, play, the chance to play in the Spodet, the trophy. The WCS points and the chance to play at the Global Finals is huge. We can take a look at the standings and just see what this tournament has already impacted the standings so far. We came wow. into the tournament with Drogo being the number one point earner, but things have really changed. Yeah, <laughs> well, to be honest, I think it still needs some updating. I'm seeing a single Protoss up there and even a Karen, <laughs> which, you know, if you if Nathaniel's stream is anything to go by, like, <laughs> just does not belong up there. But <laughs> we have a couple more games to go, and, and hopefully Zerg will round this out. It, I do have to say, we got to talk to David Kim about this Protoss and Karen <laughs> issue because, frankly, the lack of creep that they have available to them has been pretty gross. It's <laughs> an epidemic at this point, really. But Nurture yeah. being number one, obviously fantastic. Snoot not too far away or around the corner either. But going back onto this game at hand, talk to me. Are we having uh, it's huge. A, a crush? Because, I mean, we can play the oh. fairy tale story over and over. Yes, we are, by the way. Oh, are you you're going to do the non No, every series has been 3-0 or 3-1 today. Today's been the day of crushing, just and like... 
No, this one, Roddy? it can be. Elazer really has been too good in ZVZ lately to suddenly lose 0-3. I just don't see a world where that's happening. And so he's going to win 3-1. Okay, well, oh, wow. that, that could okay. be possible. Like earlier we were mentioning, right, that TVZ and PVZ are very difficult matchups. That if you play against somebody that's better than you, it's really hard to overcome that differential. And if you're better, then it's actually very easy to just find a way to exploit your adventures and show that you're better. ZVZ is obviously a skill-based matchup. But I do think as an underdog, it's a little easier to win mm. than, for instance, a TBC or a ZBT. Right. Think so? Yeah, I think I could say so that. So you're both on the side of a laser here. Um, I think a lot of people at home are definitely on the side of Hydra. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. You can tell me in a Reddit appreciation for it if you yeah. want to. Or, or lack uh, thereof, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Apollo. Uh, I'm actually with the laser as well. I spoke to Jens backstage wow. after his big win against Violet just now. And he said that he would rather face Hydra than a laser because he's actually so afraid of a laser ZVZ. He says his timings are Fantastic. sick, and Did Hydra is a that? lot more predictable. He, it's a word for word. I thought he said it would be more fun to play Hydra. I yeah, but, but he said it would be more fun, but he also said, I'm afraid okay. of a laser, it, that it, his timings are incredible. I, hope I only heard the lame building. fun comment. I was like, no. yeah, okay. I hope you all three are being truthful right now, no, because I really you're building am. the hopes would of I'd... a lot of people in that auditorium. Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm being serious. I think, I think it's going to be a laser 3-2. I mean, I didn't say I think Elaza was going to win. I just said it was not going to be a 3-0 sweep. Because I okay, thought that then, you okay, guys sorry. all thought that Hydra was the big the favorite here. 3-1 from Jeff, I think you said. Yeah. And a 3-2. For a laser. For a laser still. Yep. No, Roddy. I'm going to go with 3-2 Hydra. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. Like I just okay. said it was not going to be a sweep. I didn't okay. say that Elaza uh, was sorry, going I to win. Okay, so 3-2 Hydra. I think just based on experience, but I really think that Elaza's ZVZ has been looking so good that I cannot imagine him being slaughtered over here. He's going to put up a very good fight, and maybe he can get his revenge of WCS Season 3. That I'm not sure of, but I think it's going to be very close. All right, thank you very much, gentlemen. It's time to start the last quarterfinal of the evening. We're going to go to the stage for a big opening, I hope, for both Elaza and Hydra. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage for the final time tonight and the final time here in the auditorium as well because tomorrow we head over to the Spodek Arena for the semi-finals and the final. We have three men already in that semi-final, but who's going to join them? It's one of our two last players in our last quarterfinal of the night and it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to a ZVZ as if we've had none of those this week. I think we've had a few, but nevertheless, this one is going to be epic. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the last quarter finalists, Hydra and Eliza. Yeah. Gents, best of luck to both of you. And we'll head to the commentary team for our final quarterfinal. Uh, thank you very much, Red Eye. This is the last time now today we are going to see a chance for a Polish player to make his way to play in the Spodek Arena tomorrow. And that coming out with the Polish flag, Brendan. Mm. Mm. Tons of hype oh, behind this guy. And uh, contrary to, you know, that typical story that you see you know the koreans dominating all the time a lot of people are saying on the desk outside you could hear it in the audience obviously the hype is real oh yeah a lot of people are thinking this guy could actually take it and i i tend to agree i i think he i think he will be able to i think you, you look at it on paper and you say okay well we, we were kind of discussing this we we're looking it up right before we uh we came out to talk to you guys here at the caster's desk you know, a Lazer's had some really good runs in Zerg versus Zerg. He's beaten very good Zerg players. He's taken series off of Snoot, off of Bly, off of a lot of these guys who have also taken series off of Hydra. But being able to actually beat Hydra on a stage like this is a whole different beast. But he's got that energy coming in, right? You know, it's, yeah. it's all all the electricity's going through the air into that booth for a Lazer, the Polish crowd, and that might be the spark he needs to to energize himself for this match. Yeah. And the only thing I've heard is that this guy is a genius of ZVZ. They were talking yeah. about it on the desk. He's played only against Zergs so far in this tournament. He's only had to practice for one matchup, the one that mattered the most to get that 6K, and is looking like it's going to matter the most to even yeah. get all the way to the finals and win this whole He's thing. He's so. going to need to keep cranking out the ZVZ, yeah. and, you know, it, it's, it's just turning us into the greatest experts of Zerg versus Zerg. I'm thing. learning a lot, actually, yeah. I, I, uh, during I, this I, tournament. I feel like I'm already rank 100 Grandmaster with Zerg. It, it is an amazing feeling, and this matchup uh, is definitely one of those ones that are going to get very tricky. Of course, you can see, make sure you guys keep uh, 
hitting us up. We've been reading a lot of the conversations, uh, mm. your your wonderful tweets. Of course, the Reddit posts that In Control so politely <laughs> mentioned, as there have been so very many of them. Yes. It's been nice. And I guess that today, now is probably another good time and reminder as well. If you're watching, if you've, you've been watching all day very faithfully and you are not aware, we are actually running a promotion where those of you who have connected your Battle.net accounts to Twitch can actually get a portrait on your mm -hmm. account a few weeks after the conclusion of this event. You can get a portrait basically saying, hey, I was here, I was watching this, and it was awesome. And also the opportunity to win a free copy of Legacy of the Void has been given out to a few people. So just make sure if you haven't already done so, you can go to settings on your Twitch account and connections, and then connect your Battle.net account, watch the stream with your connected account, get some free stuff, because free stuff is awesome. And of course, you can brag to your friends, hey, I watched the tournament, you didn't, I've got a sick new portrait. Yeah, exactly. Uh, definitely go ahead and do that. Free stuff is pretty awesome. It's always awesome to brag about like in-game stuff that's harder for other people to get to. You know? Limited edition yeah, stuff, I think. It, it, you know? it pretty much is. Unless you have a time machine, then I guess you could always just <laughs> go back and watch the tournament as well. But yeah, I mean, this will be your one chance yeah. during uh, during watching this. And, yeah, uh, this, uh, <laughs> this is your opportunity. And of course, uh, a lot of people here, of course, ready to watch. The crowd's been great all day. And one more match for them to to really have that chance. And it yeah. is interesting because if you look at like career-wise, history, results, as good as we know a laser to be, he hasn't had these big offline results. It's not surprising to see a guy like Snoot take down Violet. You know, he's he's no, beaten no. players like CJ Hero competing as well at previous Intel Extreme Masters events. But a laser, this is where he really has to prove himself as a top competitor in Europe, yeah. in, in StarCraft in general. And I, I love his attitude when he went out on that stage. You know, other players, maybe they get nervous, they, they get a little bit flustered, they're not sure how to handle all of the eyes watching them. But this guy, he's got the giant Polish flag. He walks yeah. out there, huge confidence. He destroys the Chinese player out there before Ayasanu and uh, makes it look easy. He only dropped a set because he messed up the control at a very uh, typical point there. But... He's looking really strong here, and I'm really excited to get into the series. Yeah, it's time to find out if he can make his dreams and perhaps his countrymen's dreams come true in the top right. The Red Zerg, give it up for a laser. There he is. He's got that look in his eye. He wants to get to the semifinals, but so does this player down in the bottom left in the blue from Korea. It is Hydra. Would uh, would not be an unfamiliar final if everything going similar to last year, you know, the first big WCS you know season final, of course, bit of a different mm. format. We had Hydra going up against Polt in Poitiers to to finish things off, but this is a chance to you know change change the course of history as a lot of people have pegged Hydra to be the strongest player on this side of the bracket. Polt likewise on the other side. But with Violet removed from the equation, we have just two Koreans left. And now we find out how good a laser really is yeah. at Zerg versus Zerg. And this side of the bracket is so dangerous when you look at these players that are Zergs, that are good in Zerg versus Zerg. You got a laser, as you were talking about, but Snoot, the winner of yeah. this has to go up against Snoot. And that is going to be another really, really hard matchup. We already saw him decimate Violet out there. It's not going to be easy for either of these and players. It says a lot that Snoot's like, you know what, I'd actually rather play Hydra than a laser. Because yeah. if you think about it, like Hydra and Snoot probably don't play each other all that often. And I think uh, at the results that we were looking at, there really weren't that many matches between them. But a laser is someone he probably runs into a ladder a lot more. He's probably a lot more familiar with his tactics. And if you do that, if you play someone a lot and you still don't want to play them again, <laughs> that means he's probably like, you know what, this guy actually has some timings and builds that I am really, oh, yeah. really struggling against. So I'd rather play versus someone who plays a more standard vanilla style than this guy who has some really, really focused strategies. Yeah, and that's exactly what Snoot was saying. He, uh, Besides the, you know, it would be more fun to face a, a, or a laser, rather, um, he, he was just like, we went five and five in the Ting tournament. You know, it was extremely close every game that we played. He's an excellent ZVZ player, but specifically his timings are really on point. They're so hard to defend. I don't know if Hydra has any of this information coming in here, but Snoot definitely giving us the information and you guys out in the crowd that uh, a laser's definitely got some tricks up his yeah. sleeve here. It's interesting when you consider that these are both players that played their round of 16 matches today as well, so they didn't have the mm. full day to prepare like some of the other players would have. You know, Hydra came into today looking to beat Neeb and a laser likewise in his previous match, but already, 
you know, some ZVZ flavor to start. It's not like he's, you know, unfamiliar with this matchup, and that gives Hydra something else to look at. But uh, so far for this game, very straightforward openings out of both sides. Zergling speed, very normal, very expected, up to three bases. Nothing super crazy. We're not seeing massive commitments just yet. A laser's starting to get out a few more links. Maybe he wants to pressure this hatch. But if Hydra's aware, I do believe he, he got that veiling nest. So mm -hmm. he should be able to set himself up okay in a defensive position. Yeah, and a laser on the flip side, not getting any veiling nests here. Just looking to put on a bit of pressure, get that uh, tempo advantage going, try to pressure that third base while getting up his own. And probably just drone behind it. I don't think he's going for any big attack just yet. There's the Roach Warren. There are some more drones, and it's really going to be up to Hydra now to defend against this. He hasn't made any uh, Banelings just yet, and he does have less Lings, but he's making a huge swell of extra Lings now for the defense. Yep, and it all just comes down to, of course, the positioning that he can get. I think in an ideal world, if you're a laser, you just want to force out a good number of links. Because he's already building drones and a roach horn behind this. If he really wanted to cancel that base, he probably would have needed his own baneling nest so that he could try to do a micro battle where he could get damage done. This opens him up, though, for the counterplay, depending on how many roaches he builds, where Hydra might say, you know what, actually, if you don't have a baneling nest, and maybe he's not 100% aware of that, you can't really deal with a big Ling Swell because of how open the third base is. Yeah, and this is going to be really interesting. We do have the Roach Warren finishing up, and Laser has seen with his Overlords this big attack coming over here. Is he going to be ready in time for the defense? Yeah, it's certainly going to be difficult to manage. The Lings are coming up for Hydra. A Laser trying to pull the Queen back to the ramp. He does get surrounded. Unfortunately, that Queen will go down, and now it's just Lings versus Baines, and oh, oh. Hydra just crashes right through that front defense, and laser has got some Roaches out, but... I don't know, he, he could take a lot of damage here. He definitely could. There's another big swell of roaches coming around. He loses another queen here. The roaches are going to do a very nice job against the banelings, and he does have a big number of them out by now. Already about nine roaches here, but Hydra really just looking for whatever damage he can take. Yeah, and behind this, Hydra's getting a few more lings, but also moving into a couple more drones. The drone count wasn't really hurt that badly for a laser, but your fear, of course, is that your opponent could be sending a lot more links. He could be making more banelings to sort of crack you. So is he comfortable with the roaches that he's built enough to go back into drones? So far, it, it seems like, yes, both players are getting a little bit more tech. Evolution Chamber for a laser. Hydra's moving up to Lair, getting his own Roach Warren. So probably coming back into some sort of Roach Ravager versus Roach Ravager setup between both skies. Yeah, and after all, I, I do feel like a laser got the better of that. He did lose a couple of queens, which definitely does hurt the production a bit, but he has a nice big swell of Roaches out on the map that he can put pressure on he's easily going to defend i feel like he could drone up behind this but it seems like he does want to continue just making more and more roaches and possibly go for an attack here doesn't want any more uh attack at all he has got that evil chamber so we might see some drops possibly while he does pressure the front yeah that's definitely one of the things he's shown us quite a bit of especially considering that he hasn't started any upgrades just yet mm -hmm. so the links come in he's like okay you've been droning a little bit but you know what Valdez, he's still just cranking out roaches. So it seems like a laser wants to capitalize on an opportunity where Hydra, who's still adding in drones, who's getting an overseer to scout, who's getting roach speed, and an evolution chamber is going to invest in all these things that simply won't be ready in time. Yeah, and look at this. No drops at all. He's just going to Whoa. try to barrel Whoa, down the, the front. He's got that drone with the <laughs> army, too. The one drone. He's like, oh. no, I wanted to come fight. He's like, no, you have to go home. Yeah, go home and mine. So you, this, this, is no, this is no place for, for a youngin' like you. The queen back home does get sniped, so possibly limiting the injects for follow-up aggression and Hydra making the most out of units that aren't really that good in those fights, but... With one spine done, two more halfway complete, a laser, he's, the, the clock is ticking on his attack. Yeah, it really is. A laser needs to attack right now, going straight for that spine. But oh. here comes Hydra getting a really nice surround. But there are some Ravagers in the back trying to land their Corrosive Vials. Yeah, I mean, the Banelings are also trying to help just soften up with a little bit of AoE. And that allows Hydra's Roaches to get a bit more damage done. It's very important to keep those Ravagers alive in the back. They have so much more range. He is chewing through the Roach count. But now he's getting up on top of the Spine Crawlers. That bonus damage isn't going to be enough. Corrosive Vials take out one of them. There's no transfuses, it seems, by the Queen. Yeah, the Queens are just not really helping out all that much, and these Ravagers in the back are doing huge amounts of damage. He's taking out nearly every spine crawl. He's going to oh, get that third boy. one. One transfuse does come out, and more roaches do pop, but is it enough? Yeah, Hydra's getting these roaches. His roach speed is finally ready, but is it too little too late? He needs to get on top of the Ravagers. They're a bit weaker than those roaches, but the Ling Flood reinforcing is helping a laser so much. He's pushing up into the main base ramp. Hydra just desperately cranking out roaches while a laser rallies across the map. He's taking out the drones <laughs> in the third base using corrosive vials. 
to push that army back at the same time. I love the corrosive files here. First on the larva eggs that were going to hatch, and now to zone out the army. And I think this is just going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. He's trying to get up this ramp. There's just not enough units here for Hydra. There's just way too much for a laser. He steps up. He gets the queens. He's cleared out the third base. He has the drone advantage back home. He's got the army advantage. And with these Ravagers, he has the tech advantage. He's already moving into his own lair. He's getting his plus one. Some of his things came in a bit later, but he got a lot of work done with this attack and will also kill the third base at the same time. Yeah, he's going to get that third base. It does look like he has to back off as a lot of his Ravagers have gone down in the fight, but I think he can easily go back. This yeah, is a big I mean, two-player map. You can go back and defend and be prepared for anything that Hydra's exactly, going to throw at him. Exactly, Valdez. By killing that third base with all the other damage he's done, he doesn't have road speed, so a fight out on the center of the map is going to be really hard to take. He just needs to bolster his forces, get ready to defend. I wouldn't even mind a spine or two because Hydra has to restart his third base. With the drone count that a laser has, he has enough of an income advantage, just very slightly, where if he can just hold on to this, he should be able to bounce back once he shuts this attack down to finish the game. Yeah, literally the only thing that he is behind on is the road speed, but that's not going to be all that much of a problem. And he's I getting it this. right now. He's ahead in the plus one. He's doing little things like this, he's just pulling sniping the drones. Back. He's buying himself so much time. A laser is playing the ZVZ like a god. Yeah, this this is just phenomenal ZVZ. I, I can't say anything else. The Polish Zerg has really stepped it up. And by buying that time, you know, Valdez, that Roach speed is coming in. He's going to have his plus one attack much sooner as well. And for Roaches, that was always a significantly impactful upgrade. A couple less volleys to kill your opponent's Roaches is mm. sometimes the you know, all that you need to win the game. And really great Ravager control. I love seeing him use the Biles on the static defense I mean, rather than hitting the units that could dodge. But also while he was killing the third, throwing the Biles on the ramp, it's like, yeah, if you want to come yeah. down the ramp, you're going to have to eat free damage. Really fantastic. Using those Ravagers really, really well. And now that the plus one has finished, he is going to start pushing across the map here, sniping some overlords and that's like the Tiki guy he that, is. That's insult to injury. Hydra has yeah. no overlords in production right now. He actually cannot build units. So for 18 seconds, he's basically sitting here like, oh my god, I really just need to survive until I can get more forces out. Whereas a laser, he's got that upgrade advantage we talked about. He has road speed now. And with this, yeah. he, he should be able to just punch it in. It would take a serious error in the execution for him to lose this game now. Yeah, we saw him backing up and playing safe against Ayasano. He just wants to make sure he can win this fight. And this looks like it should be the end, pushing up the main ramp, going for the victory. Yeah, he's right on top of this army. Hydra's forces are crumbling behind the might of the Polish Zerg as he's backed into his own third. GG, a laser takes game number one. Making it look easy as well. You can see him there in the booth looking confident once again. And wow, it, it really looks like he is the one that is massively favored in this matchup. That ZVD was that just was, so smooth. I loved there, every there part of it. There wasn't much trickery in that game. It was just straight up. He set himself up very well with getting his roaches out just in time to handle that Ling Bane aggression that came out of Hydra. And that can be such a scary thing to deal with in ZBZ. He didn't even build a Bane Ling nest, and he had Lings in his main, killing his queens. He's like, you know what? I can actually still win this game. Hmm. And I feel like that's a position where a lot of players, especially when you're, you know, you're a non-Korean going up against a guy like Hydra, you're asking yourself, like, is this where I lose, right? He's broken me. Are my roaches even going to be enough? But just phenomenal way to hold it together. Yeah, just barely holding on there. And then I love the idea, uh, like we used to see in Heart of the Swarm, just massing speedlings on top of your ramp, not showing your opponent, and then going for one massive swell and just trying to knock down the third base. We saw that here again, except with roaches. He didn't go for any tech, didn't get a lair, none of that. He just made as many roaches as possible, then made his way across the, the map, and Hydra was totally unsuspecting, and he sustained so much damage. I mean, if he can execute like that for the rest of this series, I mean, this, how weird would it be if we had the, you know, the non-Korean player go up 2-0 to start the game against one of the one of the most highest ranked players going into this? You're like, okay, well, we start this tournament. We have, all right, you know, we got some good foreigners here, mm. you know, but some of the bigger guns that most people would say could go far, like Showtime got knocked out of this very early. Uh, we still have Nurcio, who's... You know, the underdog yeah. for sure. Some against, of the French players, Marine Bull. Lord Lilbo, yeah. you know, not making it through. And uh, Laser coming out here as another one of these Polish players. I feel like he, above anyone else, even over Nurcio, he's really feeding off the energy of the crowd. I feel like he's playing even better than he did in that series against Bly here today, uh, now up on stage. It really does show. 
And uh, even though maybe we weren't talking about this guy specifically too much when we were naming big names, if he does make it to the semifinals here and defeat someone like Hydra, he is going to be one of those big names. Yeah, this this is one of those moments where you, you solidify yourself as a top contender in the foreign scene. He's played ZVZ so much to actually get here throughout the qualifiers, pretty much throughout the majority of this tournament as well. And it has just been showing. So uh, very, very excited to see if he goes up 2-0 like that's just that's just such a good position because it's not just the pressure of playing in front of that crowd like you mentioned but when you win yeah it's like man you know my yeah. people are seeing me kick some ass here and it is awesome yeah and that's exactly what we saw in his series against IA ISON he just once he got that one win the second one came so fast he yeah. went straight into a, a big all-in after defeating him in the first game and he got 2-0 so quickly and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a similar uh, kind of idea happen here, yeah. especially on Prion Terraces. Exactly. Prion Terraces is the map that asked for it. In the top left, currently leading this best of five, we have the Red Zerg player. Give it up for a laser. And down in the bottom right, the competitor here up against the Polish player, the Korean player. It is Hydra. Tryon Terraces, of course. You know, we talk about this map. It is the only map ever in StarCraft II where you have had a gold base as your natural expansion. Unless you are a very, very crazy player who built a hatchery out in the center of the map on, a, on you know, yeah. uh, some, some of these other weird ones like Overgrowth <laughs> yeah. or Terraform, but that that wasn't really normal. Like, and now everybody kind of gets to experience uh, what that's been like for Zergs that have been doing crazy builds, like Hydra, actually, over the course of the years. And we have double Whoa. hatch before pool. This is the opposite of what I was thinking. You know, I was thinking maybe a very aggressive build yeah. on a map like this, but he's going to go greedy in the opposite way. I was going to say, this This is like equally ballsy as <laughs> yes. a one base play, exactly. except just going for the cash money. Yeah, and we, we did see Hydra go for the hatch on the low ground as soon as possible. Laser did delay it slightly. But uh, at the same time, he is getting the second one. And it really does depend on when Hydra does scout this. He does have that Overlord slowly Damn. going across the map. But if he doesn't scout that, if he doesn't expect it, a laser could definitely get away with this for a long time. And then that gold base is really going to help him in terms of income to allow him to get ahead. Yeah, I think the craziest part about this is that if you're Hydra, losing that first game that way, you know, do you really want to risk going down 0-2 with a fast cheese? Suddenly, that fast spine crawler, like, how absurdly defensive is this? He's expecting the aggression <laughs> to come out, kind of like we were talking yeah. about. But now, this is just the ultimate, he's actually mind gaming himself because a laser is basically saying, yeah, if you play standard, I am so far ahead with gold, two gold bases this fast. A laser is just a greedy boy, and you know what? He's, he's going to have his cake and eat it too with this very, very vanilla opening from Hydra. Yeah, Hydra just playing it safe there. He does cancel the spine once he makes sure that uh, a laser does get that hatchery on the low ground here, but he still doesn't know about that third base. And yeah. he has no other scout. Well, he's going to see the Zerglings coming yeah, from if, there. If he's if looking he was at watching. where those lings came from, he might ask himself, he's like, oh, no, 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 no. And the thing is, the more time that passes by, you know, it's going to reach a point where Hydra's only choice will be to just pull the trigger on a massive all-in where he just goes for a big attack. Because yeah. if he, right now, like that gold base, that third base is done. If he gets drones on that and starts mining on it, Hydra's never going to catch up in economy. So he has to either all in or do some other sort oh. of crazy greedy play. Okay, he is going to scout it here. And as you were saying, this is definitely going to trigger Hydra to either attack as soon as possible or try to take his own third base. But if you go for that third base, you're definitely playing from behind because yeah. every second that goes by, that's extra larva for a laser that's extra mining there at that extra gold base. Looks like it is going to be a timing out of Hydra. He's going to go for plus one here. Having that lair on the way as well, looks like it's going to be a plus one roach I a rush with speed. I do like it. It's important to consider that a laser doesn't have to just try to be ahead economically with these gold bases. He can also use this to fund a really heavy mm. attack that might be a bit bigger than you normally get if the bases were, you know, just regular blue minerals. So he's got a Bailey Nest. He's getting a Roach Horn. No lair. So Hydra, this could still be a scenario where if he can just defend, even though he doesn't have the income, using good control, decision making, he could still come out on top if he can just hold off whatever comes. Elijah's about to finish five Overlords. We're gonna find out what he wants to build real soon. Yeah, let's take a look and see. He does have the Roach Warren and the Baneling Nest here still. 
no lair, and yeah. it is going to be an Evo chamber here on the way. I mean, I suppose it could be drops once again. Definitely it, it something is, to think about. It is interesting to note, though, you know, we, like you just said, he's getting the evolution chamber. He hasn't really stopped droning. He's still squeezing the fuel. And he also took another gas. So mm. unless he felt like he needed more gas, no, he's taking another extractor. Okay. So he definitely seems like he wants to get a lot more, which is curious because that road speed should be really nice for Hydra to defend. But then again, you know, last game, it, it didn't do too much when he was the one defending. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I guess he has scouted the third base of Hydra going up here, and he's saying, okay, I want to get as ahead as possible with the lead that I already have. Just try to drone up and saturate all three of my bases and then transition into Roaches here. He is going to have a lot of Roaches coming and the plus one, but it is going to be behind Hydra. And I, I think it is going to be up to a laser to defend here. I think he's going to have more roaches, though, because yeah. he's had that high, uh, extra hatchery for such a long time. Yeah, but you're right. The time it takes for Hydra to get his own gold base and saturate it, the lasers will have already more than paid itself off. So it's just going to come down to making these the most of these units that he does have, which I still think with Ravagers, he can make up the, in the upgrade difference just because the Ravagers do have that corrosive bile that can just unleash lots of pain. But... These, these roaches kind of really putting themselves out there. He's, yeah, he's, going onto the creep and Hydra's roaches do have the speed. This is going to force the laser to fight or just run away and sustain major losses here. Yeah, it seems like you really wasn't expecting to see this tech layout. And actually, I mean, a laser could be just throwing away the, possibly even just this game by moving out like this. He does have a good amount of roaches coming out here to fight against this, but he could have taken this position way more defensively. Moving out like this against a player that has that speed upgrade and that plus one attack is really risky. Like, if he didn't have those units yeah. on the way there at that exact moment, he might have just, like, thrown that game right there with that play. Yeah, it seemed like he wanted to put on the pressure but was not expecting uh, yeah. you know, Hydra's upgrades, kinda, as you were saying. That was kind of weird. Yeah, so kind of even up here at this point, definitely the upgrade advantage going to Hydra, but uh, the slight drone advan advantage also going over to a laser. So with that small move, this game just became very even. Yeah, I mean, the lair, like you said, is has been one of the most interesting points because he was set up to ricochet off this early gold into a big push, but then kept squeezing out drones, kept taking more gases, and the upgrades in the long run should really, really help Hydra. His army's just so much more mobile. If he starts to spread out, maybe even get some burrow play going on, it could be really difficult for a laser to handle all the pressure. Yeah, right now they both have the plus one. A couple of... Uh excuse me, uh, Ravagers here for a laser on the fight, but Hydra is going to try to take this fight here. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to. A really nice concave here for a laser, but actually now Hydra pushing the issue. Yeah, and he's just going to step right up with that road speed. There is no running away from this army for a laser. The most he can do is make use of the Ravagers that he does have with the Corrosive Biles, with the extra range, with the extra damage that they do do to try to knock this down, but there's just not a lot of support for the Ravagers, and the roaches can get right on top of them. Yeah, getting right on top of those queens too, bursting them down. A couple of nice transfuses but I'm not sure if it's going to be enough. A bunch of roaches popping out here for a laser, but slowly and steadily, Hydra is maintaining the higher roach count. Yeah, I really think the upgrades are just so astronomically important in this scenario. Having had that plus one in the roach speed so early, the lair basically just finishing for a laser. Yeah, he had the money really fast. He had the economic advantage, but he honestly didn't do anything with it. Mm. Just delayed his own tech, got into a position where he could have built a lot of units, and then didn't. Mm. So Hydra now on top of the ramp here. A laser trying to pull off the Miracle Defense. Maybe if he can land a couple of these Corrosive Vials. No, actually kills his own Ravager there. And now Hydra on top of the ramp. He's just got so many roaches. Even the plus two and the plus one armor coming in here. GG, Hydra is going to take game number two. Yeah, pretty, pretty cumbersome game there out of a laser who had a certain build order advantage. But going for the double hatch before pool, Hydra didn't really do anything to pressure him. He almost built a spine crawler in defense, but it seems like Hydra Hydra might also be asking himself that question. He's like, okay, well, I should have been behind, but my opponent just kind of ran like six or eight roaches out yeah. of the map, threw those away, threw a Ravager away, and that alone is just kind of kind of kind of strange the lair was yeah. really really late for a laser it seemed like he needed to do a big push if he was going to delay his tech that much yeah i was just thinking you know he, he was so far ahead in terms of his economy i was just why don't you just sit back on your three bases and just defend i feel like maybe it was a bit of overconfidence or maybe he wanted to do that bit of tempo play like i was thinking but yeah i mean either way he does get caught in the middle of the map and that's definitely going to get him behind in that game and possibly uh, you know, give the big advantage to Hydra there. So evening it up, Hydra looking uh, morose in in the booth. Yeah. Not sure what he's thinking about. I, but. I think if you're Hydra, you're still kind of like, you know what? That game could have gone bad so fast. 
You know, it's a 1-1, but it's not like Hydra brought the series back to a standstill in dominating fashion. It was kind of like, all right, I don't really know why some things happened, but I think he, he, still, he still realizes that that game could have very easily ran away from him with the opening that a laser got away with. Yeah, so it looks like we are getting ready and set to jump into game number three here. Excited to see what the map is going to be and how these two players are going to play it out. I feel like the whole series gets a little bit more dynamic once it is 1-1, you know. It's not like one player is running away with the series here, and it definitely has evened itself up here. Yeah, and I'm very, very excited to see if uh, if he can once again put himself ahead in this best of five. But laser is still shown, you know, he's... He's got the moxie to go for those builds where he can be greedy, but maybe he realizes that he was either trying to do something a little bit too fancy or that he maybe just mind gamed himself with thinking over too many different things. Just get your plan, stick to it, and you should be fine. We are loaded into Orbital Shipyard for game number three. In the top right as the Red Zerg, we have the Polish player, a laser. Looking to come back in this series for his hometown here. And down in the bottom left, in the blue, the Korean Zerg, it is Hydra. But that fast pool in gas, Valdez. Hydra, maybe he's the one that wants to play a little cheeky cheeky this game with a, a Swift possibly going for a hatch cancel from a laser. Or maybe even just going for the throw, maybe drop a bailing nest and just go all in very quickly. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I, I think I'm leaning that way when I look at this kind of build, just because you do have that backdoor base. It's going to be easier to defend, harder for Hydra to get here. And I, I think this is the map to do it on. Um, uh, we did have Dust Towers, I think, for game number one, and we had Prion Terraces there. Here's another two-player map, one of the last ones we are going to have for this series. So you know where your opponent is. You can get over to him pretty fast. Definitely not the longest rush distance in the world. And he's going to start off here with just some Ling speed. Yeah, I mean, as far as normal builds go, it was a hatchery first into gas, into pool for a laser. So he didn't rush straight up to that pool by any any means. But but the time it takes for those Lings to get across to his base, he should be starting some. This is where this is where we see Hydra being very decisive. This Baneling Nest says, I want to win, and I want to win now. Exactly. He kept mining that gas, and it looks like he's going to pool his lings for now. He sent out two, but he's keeping the rest in his main. He really, oh, this is actually four. He's, I think, this I think, is normal. This looks so normal, and I'm not sure if a laser is going to figure this out. Yeah, I, I don't know that a laser actually saw those first uh, four lings step out, because if you see the lings early, this early, you immediately tell yourself, okay, well, obviously my opponent is going to do something weird. I mm -hmm. need to start building lings but a laser's still getting a couple of drones. The queens are nice if he can block the ramp with them, but these four might even just be the first four banelings while the speedlings that he's pooling back home just sprint across the map. Yeah, definitely. Oh, this would be, be so important if he saw this. Uh, yeah, three banelings are morphing, but he doesn't know. Yeah, he's splitting off his uh. slings here, but that's the one corner of the map that he missed. He's not going to see this. He does have an overlord at the bottom of the ramp yeah, of Hydra's base, lings. so he sees the lings now. So now he has to prepare his defenses. And he took a third base? A laser's building a third! Whoa! Uh, you need that. You need <laughs> those resources somewhere else right now. He starts up a spine crawler in his main base, but the banelings are already on the way. He barely catches a glimpse of them, and now he sees what is on his way. So there's the cancel on the third, but so many banelings, so many zerglings as well, just going right into his base. That spine's not even halfway done. Yeah, he needs the magical hold here. I love the position on the queens. He's going to run his drones down to the second base, uh -oh. but here come the Banelings. Uh-oh, the Banes get all of the drones that tried to run away, and a Hydra just, you know, with this build order, a laser being a bit greedy here, not being able to find those morphing Banelings when he moved his two lings out. And I, I think this should just be a quick game number three win for Hydra. I don't know what a laser is supposed to do. GG. GG. Really decisive builds coming out of Hydra there. Wants to take the series back into his hands, and he did just that. Really, yeah. really awesome build, actually. I love the way he had that planned out. That was definitely a planned strategy. He's like, okay, Orbital Shipyard, this is what I'm going to do. Two-player map, going to hide my lings. Really nicely done by Hydra. And that's a really strong mental blow as well to a yes. laser. You know, game number one, a laser, you got to be feeling so good after that. Game number two, you ha open up with the advantage. You make a mistake or two, and... You know, things kind of fell out of his favor, but you, th you can see to yourself, hey, I can recover from this. I can come back from this. Game number three, Hydra's like, no, you yeah. can't. Smacks you down. And going into game four, I think 
a laser's going to be asking himself, he's like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Yeah, he was looking and feeling really confident there after game number one, but he's got to win two in a row. Is he going to be able to with the crowd behind him? I'm not sure. That's going to be very difficult. We will find out with the conclusion of this best of five after a very short break. We'll be right back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the World Championship Series Winter Championship here at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. We are close to the conclusion of our final best of five of the day. Don't worry, there's still another great day tomorrow. We'll be oh, playing yeah. on the big old Spodek stage. That is going to be sick, Valdez. I can't wait to be there, but we have to find out who is going to be our finer, final player to join the other three. That's right, we're loaded into the next game in the bottom right of Ruins of Ceres. Get up for the Polish Zerg. He is a laser. Got to win two in a row here to come back against this player in the bottom left in the blue from Korea. It is Hydra. And this this ZBZ is a bit, bit topsy turvy. Uh, very decisive game one victory for a laser, and then game number two, he kind of had it. He had yeah. he had everything he needed to cruise to a very comfortable mid game with a heavy advantage. And then just a couple of questionable decisions, sending the roaches out into the map, 
And then game three, Hydra just punished him for his, I mean, just, just, just smacked him down for his greedy yeah. openings. Sometimes I feel like a best of five is like riding the wave of emotion for some of these uh, pro gamers. You know, it feels so good for a laser to take that first map so decisively, and then he makes one mistake. And then all of a sudden, things seem like they're beginning to fall apart before our eyes. You know, just one mistake, Hydra takes game two, and then he goes for a really big rush build on game three, and all of a sudden it's 2-1 before like before yeah. he can even think about it, before a laser can even think about it. Yeah, that, and he's that, in this position where he has to win feel, two in a row. Can't feel good when you, you get that decisive victory, then you're like, oh, you know, I kind of botched game two, you know, but not really that bad. Then game three, it's like, <laughs> oh, no, I'm in a bad spot now. Yeah, and now he's got to come out of the bottom of those emotions and somehow rise up. If he can win this game, then I think it's anyone's game for game yeah. number five, but this is going to be the hard one, I think, for a laser. Yeah, this is this is definitely the one where he's you know a bit more pressure than perhaps necessary gets put onto him. Uh, had he been a little bit more diligent in the earlier maps, so it is horizontal spawns, very direct rush path between both of these players, and that of course it means that we we could see those mid game pushes be a lot more important since the path to go back to counterattack is going to be that much shorter and a laser's already saying you know what maybe i was a bit too greedy i'm gonna get the spine just mm. in case maybe hydra is that guy maybe he is crazy enough to try to pull something and that already works in hydra's favor since he, he's just droning yeah it's funny because knowing hydra he's not crazy enough to do what a laser did in game number two where it's like go for that double expand try to get ahead in that way so i actually like the idea of going for the spine crawler you know, maybe say, oh, Hydra, he got a quick game there. He wants to take another quick one off of me before I can even think, you know, and, and I have to be prepared. And I just noticed, actually, a laser is actually playing without any gas at all. So this is a speedless opening. The spine crawler is not just for precaution. It is necessary mm. in the event that he gets attacked. So he's being greedy, but in a roundabout different sort of way than he was in the previous maps, whereas instead of cutting out uh, his defenses to get an extra expansion, he's cutting out his tech so that he can still get this expo up. He can still kind of get more drones and more economy, but at the expense of being weak against a map. Basically, mass speed link kind of crushes this. If Hydra knew what we knew, if he was yeah. just a wizard, <laughs> you build a bunch of links and there's no way you can block this ramp. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to believe that some of these players aren't wizards, but this time he isn't going to figure out. Hydra's just going to be droning up himself. No. Uh, with the Ling speed. And I don't feel like the Ling speed is going to have too much of an impact on this game. He has that Bane Ling Nest, but he's not really committing to an attack. He's not going to need it for defense because obviously a laser is not going aggressive here. And I, I think this does give a nice small advantage to a laser. He's going to have these extra queens, get that creep yeah. spread, take yeah. that third base very safe. He's going to have roaches out here a little bit quicker. Exactly. And having the plus one attack nice and fast would be nice too. I think Hydra's realized this by seeing the way the wall is positioned and the lack of zerglings on the map. So Hydra is also going to go right into a lair now, realizing, you know, what is at stake? What exactly his opponent's up to? He gets his own evolution tamper. He gets his own roach horn. He doesn't seem like he wants to try to force any aggression, which could be where a laser picks this game up if he just defends. So Hydra's like, I'm going to take my advantage of map control pressure you, keep you off your third base with my speed, and get my third faster, and my tech maybe just a bit later. Oh, these links squeezing by. They're going to get a full scout here that's going to see the timing of the lair as well as, you know, no gas in the main. Just going to see everything uh, just because those three queens just barely weren't on the mark at the wall here at the natural ramp. Yeah, I, I think the, the most important part is you do want to try to use the pressure from those links. Getting them inside the scout is nice, but imagine if Hydra has a few more speed links. It is hard to move your queens out there. Imagine if, if 20 or so speed links like, come up, and obviously that's you know, a big investment for a Zerg, but you pull these queens over, and then you have a free path to mm. run into their base. They don't have, a laser doesn't have Zergling speed. And, you know, what is it with drones? <laughs> Why does this keep happening? Look, I did not look at the help <laughs> menu in StarCraft 2 and see drones being useful against walls hey, of roaches and queens. He got punished. He got poked in the eye That's by right. both the spine crawler and all the queens and the roaches. If you, so defy, if you defy your purpose in life, a giant tentacle will destroy you and rip you in pieces like a spine crawler. Yep. So we are going to have the road speed coming here a little bit faster for Hydra, but we do have the plus one a little bit faster for a laser. And the laser now just yeah. making an overseer, trying to see what's going on in the base of Hydra. He hasn't been able to get too much scouting information. He doesn't have those links with speed. So the overseer is going to be the main source of scouting information here. It still seems close enough. It's uh, it's anyone's game at this point. Really, I think the biggest thing we're probably going to decide this one on since they've both gotten to three bases. They both have their lair plus one road speed. Slightly different timings, but for the most part, it's close enough. We see a bit more gas being mined, pointed out. Uh, for Hydra, 
but as more gas get taken for a laser, I feel like it's just going to be, you know, who gets the corrosive biomes, mm -hmm. who gets these big shots. Hydro will get a spire, so we see where that gas goes, but... He could, he could still have to take a big fight before he makes that switch into Mutalisks. Yeah, I was wondering if he was going to go for this. He hadn't shown it just yet. This is a nice little tactic to get into the back door of your opponent's base. Just do a nice bit of harass damage. And if they have no anti-air in their army, you can push it back all the way back to their base. It's a, a really cool idea, especially for this map, because... Uh, based on the spawning positions, you go right into their natural, you can swing around to their main. It's yeah. really hard, really annoying. If they don't get the scout, they don't have spores up, Hydra could definitely do a lot of damage with some mutas. Uh, th this is just one of those scenarios where Hydra wants to make a laser believe, yeah, we're both doing the same thing. Yeah, man, you're building roaches and ravagers, yeah. I'm building roaches and ravagers, everything's cool, everything's great. And then 11 mutalisks come out, snipe all your ravagers, <laughs> and just kind of bowls you over and kills you because you have no spore crawlers, you lose all your queens to their roaches and ravagers on the ground. And then Hydra picks up, you know, the series and his chance to go play its Bodek, or excuse me, he will go play if he were able to catch him off guard and win like that. Yeah. We do see a laser boosting ahead a big time in terms of his supply as he is only yeah. pumping out the roaches and ravagers, not saving anything for any muta tech switch or anything like that. So if he could take a fight now, it would definitely be nice, but I think Hydra knows this and he's yeah, immediately and, backing off. The mutas are on the way, and this is the most important part. A laser does not have anything that can deal with this. He doesn't have an infestation pit or a hydralist den or, or his own spire on the way. He's going to be locked in on everything that he has, and they, you know, kind of reminiscent of what ended up happening between TLO. And yeah. I also knew yesterday where it's like, okay, I mean, yeah, I did some damage at my push, but if you clean up this whole army and I don't do game-winning damage, I can't leave my base, and that is, well, it's not fun. No one wants to be yeah. locked in the house all day. Well, look at this. The mutas are out, and they're not going to go, well, actually, they're turning around here. It looks like they have not been revealed just yet, so he's trying to decide which angle to come from to get the most amount of damage. And I think this is the smartest way to do it, is come in, you kill the Ravagers, and then you can use your own Ravagers to defend either some of the mutas across the map, but if you're a laser, now you know you have to push. You have to do something. You're just running home. Okay, maybe you'll save these units a bit, but Hydra stands on the way. He doesn't have any spore crawlers. He will lose his Ravagers as the Immunis can chase them. The Queens come out a bit far, and they are going to be able to come hmm. pretty much save the day, but it's still a pretty dicey position for a laser. Yeah, he's desperately trying to get out Hydras right now to deal with the Mutas here. He has no spores, no spores at all. He is not prepared for this, and the Mutas are coming in, and all of the drones are stacking up. Huge amounts of damage getting done to the economy here, but a laser is going across the map. He wants to punish Hydra. Yep, and he's got a bunch more roaches on the way. He has Ravagers coming in just now starting spores, but Hydra has used this time to max out. The upgrades are even. It's going to come down to the engagement, but not all the Ravagers are ready just yet for a laser either. Yeah, I think a laser might have the plus one armor. I would love to see the upgrades. Oh, no, they are yeah. even, as you said. The Spore is trying to get up here, but a nice uh, a second swing by here uh, for Hydra. It takes out the Spore before it is done. The Queens are going to come back here and push him back, but the hardest part laser's not this. looking. Yeah, he can't put pressure on while he's doing this. So the hardest part about this for a laser is that he has to try to make this attack work with his massive Roach Ravager army while also defending, and he's going to come in. He's going to try to take this fight, but it is so risky. A couple of Biles spreading across your Roaches can be game ending. Yeah, now we do see only five Hydras being produced right now for a laser. They're both maxed out at this point. These Mutas getting more and more damage done out of the map, sniping some of these Overlords. And they have to be so careful when they engage here. Oh, a bunch of damage actually being done to Hydra. Yeah, nice uh, eating, eating a few of those battles over mm -hmm. there. And we do have Hydras coming in as well into the army for a laser. And this, there's not a lot of Hydralisks, so it's not perfectly rounding up the composition, but it definitely allows him to shove the Mutalisks away because Hydra is no longer building Mutas. He's not investing any further into that composition, so it's no longer a threat. But Banelings are interesting. Huh. Spreading out the splash damage might be his way of kind of dealing with this. Yeah, that's definitely would be very effective, especially if a laser was going for a huge amount of Hydras. We'll hold that thought. He's going oh. straight up the ramp. All of the Banelings blow up. Yeah, smacks quite right into a few of those roaches. Actually, some of the Biles for Hydra managed to hit a laser, but so far, not too bad. Actually, does land a few of his Biles on top of Hydra's army. We can see that Burrow move has finished. It's very important to note that if there's no Overseer for here for a laser's army, he can try to burrow the weakened units and save them that way. But a laser able to fight two sides at once. Still so difficult to dodge those corrosive Biles and a roach counterattack from Hydra. 
the same oh, time. Oh, I love this. He's going to be able to get so much damage done at the same time. A laser can't effectively kill the army of Hydra here. You can see he's really struggling, and now the reinforcements coming out, coming out, and he's really pushing a laser away and while getting burrow. a bunch of damage done. There's that burrow. A laser did pick up the fourth base. He is taking his own fourth at the same time. So a lot of this can come back down to just stabilizing, holding it together. Hydralisks in protracted, prolonged fights are definitely better with that range and assisting against the roaches. But I mean, sniping the queens, delaying the inject, and just killing drones in general is just such a nice thing to be able to do. Yeah, and look at this. He's going to be able to snipe this spore and try to burrow out of here once again. There is an overseer, so he will eventually clean this up. This is buying a lot of time for Hydra to get his own fourth base up, and I think this game is just going to kind of stabilize, and we're going to reach a new level. We do have Lurker Den on the mm. way here for a laser. Oh, does he know about these two roaches? These could come back to bite him really badly. I mean, he will have vision. Oh, oh. takes a swing. Okay, okay, he looks back. Oh. This is one of those things, like, you. it seems small, but you miss these two roaches, and they're going to yep. pop up. They're going to start two-shotting your drones, and you're going to hate life. Exactly. You're in a big fight. You're not paying attention. All of a sudden, you look back, you've lost 15 drones in your main, and it's like, well, how did Hydra that happen? going for 24 links. He's going to add 30 <laughs> bane links to this army. Whoa. Ooh. Okay, this is really, really gutsy. 48 bane links. 48 bane links on the way. He's going to have bane link speed, too. That lurker den is on the way. Like, if you get six or so lurkers at this and you hit that line attack on bane links, like, you're going to make Hydra look like a fool. But he <laughs> needs to be able to get there first. 48 bane links are going to crash into this army with speed. This this could be the ugliest ZVZ yeah. engagement we've ever seen if he just attacks up this ramp while these bane links are here. He needs to be very careful with his army positioning. Funka also pointing out he could burrow. That would be an interesting tactic to use. There are a bunch of overseers with this army for now. Bane link speed is about to finish. Uh, I don't think a laser has seen this either. And there's no gotta, lurkers just yet. He's building lurkers, but this this could be disastrous. He's got to back off. Just get the lurkers in a defensive oh. spot. And right now, yeah, he's going to cancel a few of these. He needs to get the hell out of here. These bane links are going to roll right into his hydras. He needs those to build the lurkers. And the bane links are just going to spread out, getting so much damage oh. done to a laser's forces. Oh. Hydra immediately remaxing out roaches. A laser trying to max as well, but he doesn't have the larva, it seems. He's building units, but he has he has so much bank, but he's not building enough to remax. What? an unbelievable play by Hydra there, hitting with all of his banelings before there were any roaches out there. A laser was not expecting that at all. He didn't have enough time to spread his units out there off the creep. And now Hydra with a uh, major advantage. And He's the sharks to... return. And look at this a hatchery. It's already below half health. He can kill all those drones and then get the hatchery if he wants. Now laser's going to step up and try to take this fight head to head, but eat some corrosive biles and the army for Hydra is just too big. He's going to push forward and it looks like Hydra should be advancing the semifinals unless a laser can pull a miracle, but I just don't know if that's going to be possible, Valdez. Hydra's definitely going to be able to win this fight. A laser has lost his fourth base. This was his only hope to win this fight, but he's falling the in terms of supply. The Hydralisk's in the back and in a lot of damage, but he's taken some hits back home. That fourth base that you pointed out did get killed. Uh, Hydra is only just now getting his fourth base as well, yeah. so a laser's hanging in there. He's definitely not in a great spot, but I feel like he has an army that can still make something happen if he can use the lurkers to his advantage, but I like that Hydra's rounding out this army with a lot more Ravagers. Those should be the key to being able to push forward and take this. Yeah, he's really just regrouping right now, just going to try to go for that max, maybe hit before there are too many Lurkers out here. Both these players have really been struggling to get up that fourth base, as you mentioned, but Hydra definitely with a bigger bank took better, more favorable engagements there. Yeah, the biggest and, uh, thing is, you know, those Banelings, if you do not get the big connections, you know, that is a yeah. lot if to the, be If there were even away. two or three Lurkers in there, and they yeah. were in a decent spot, he was you can't them. roll those Banelings like, in. You see that attack coming, you just run home. Use the Hydras that you had back at your third base, turn those into Lurkers, and then you actually have something. You kill all those Banelings in instantly, and then you have the Lurkers sustain damage against your opponent's Roaches, and they, you know, Lurkers do bonus damage to Roaches, so this is still a really useful comp, but it looks like the big fight could be happening here. It's important to watch out the clumping on those lurkers as the corrosive biles are going to start to tread against them. Yeah, Hydra has to be so careful with how he engages here. He wants to land the corrosive biles on those lurkers. He hasn't spotted them just yet. He needs an overseer with this army. In fact, he's going to try to snipe some of these overlords. Nicely I did, done. I did like that. The overlords following the army to keep track of it, but it still is going to come a lot down to the positioning here. He's throwing the biles across. Gets one of the lurkers. Yeah, gets one of them. 
And this is nice, uh, having that fourth base mining, because the pressure is all here. Hydro looks like he wants to go for a counterattack with his lings, but this is buying a lot of time for a laser. The biggest issue here is that despite how good his army is, he can't max. He needs money. He needs time. And these lings, they're not oh. going to give him time. This is a fantastic counterattack. Using that speed from earlier on, he's going to be able to kill all of those drones. And as you mentioned, the last mining maze, and all the units go back to defend, and the lurkers are left all alone, and they are cleaned up. Yeah, this is just going from bad to worse. Now, he did trade out actually quite a bit of his supply attacking into the Lurker position. Uh, he did lose a good number of the links. We have a bit of Lurker harass here on the left side. A laser's been trying to squeeze this supply closer and closer, but Hydra, look at this. Ten Mutalisks. He's going to rotate back towards that composition because he knows that it's a phenomenal way to deal with the Lurkers. Yeah, it's just so cool. You can use them for harass even at that fourth base. He's not going to be thinking about the Muta switch here. And he defended the Mutas earlier with Queen, so I don't even know that he has a bunch of spine crawlers. Uh, spore crawlers anywhere either, which yeah, and he only has is also going to keep him now. vulnerable. Yeah, he doesn't have spore coverage at his outer areas, so this should still be... Like, if he comes in here, there's not that many Hydralisks to actually stop those Mutas either. Yeah, and you can see a laser desperately trying to set up an engagement, a good engagement with his Lurkers. He does get them burrowed now. Is this the engagement that he wanted? Not quite. Hydra just going to back up for now. He needs to be so careful. A laser has a game that he can work with using these lurkers, but the Muta's transition back into that could really just be everything for him. He's going to come up here, throw some Biles, hits a massive amount onto a laser's army, but a laser's coming in from the south side. He has the lurkers to get that damage output, but the overseers are on top of the lurkers. The Muta's are coming in. The Muta's are getting the lurkers. He needs the Hydra's here to defend them, but there's just not that many Hydra's. One, two, three, and now none. The lurkers still do a great job. A laser's evened out the supply, but the biggest problem is the supply that he has can't kill the supply Hydra has. Yeah, look at this. He's making three Hydra lists right now. He doesn't have the larva. He doesn't have the income. And those lurkers are as good as dead. And Mutas yeah, are going to come dead. right back over, pick those off. And a laser's basically got to be saying to himself, he's like, how do I get out of here? He has two he's Hydras finishing. Yeah, he's got to build as much as he possibly can at this point. I don't I don't quite know what his plan is going to be. I'd love to see him. just. He's got to get a spore on that right side. Use these roaches. Buy time for yourself. Keep the Mutas from crossing the map. But if Hydra steps across like this... It could be really risky. He is going to bring the Mutas home. I think this is the, the right move. Yeah, just going to defend here. He knows how ahead he is at this point. If he can just kill these roaches, nicely done. This hatchery is definitely going to go down. One more hit. There it goes. So Laser trying to get that damage done. He's pulled back the Mutas while killing the hatchery. So that's that's a bonus. Still definitely behind here. Trying to scrap together an anti-Muta force. Five Hydras yeah. at a time. Pretty puny for now, but if he can buy some I, time somehow. I still think there should have been a, there should be a spore crawler at that fourth base, just so that you can move your forces away from there. You know, if he sends the mutas up there and all the hydras have to run up there and then the roaches go to the south side, mm. he's really gonna be stretched quite thin. And oh Hydra well one of those roaches was a traitor, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I mean he wasn't you know wasn't that bad of a guy, but yeah. okay, okay. Well look at this. There's barely any uh -oh. anti or no spore as you were mentioning. Just gonna come in here right away, clean up the drones, and he mm. can just fly away. He doesn't even have to fight the army yeah, of the, laser the, right now. The worst part is based because of where his other expansion is, he's like, Okay, well now you have yeah. to go really far away to come here and deal with this. The burrow being used very well to save the drones, but he already lost a lot of drones. He should lose this hatchery, and this is this is just a not good position for a laser. Yeah. Most of his bases are mined out. Most of both players' bases are mined out, and that just makes this so difficult. Yeah, the income right now of, of a laser is like 200 minerals a minute. It's really not good. He's lost one hatchery. Another hatchery is going down. Hydra wants to take this fight here in the middle of the map at the same time. Yeah, I mean, a laser just doesn't have what he needs to progress any further in this game. All of his expansions that have minerals are gone. His income has slowed to a crawl. And Hydra, who secured that fourth base, has managed to build an army that cannot be stopped. And this fight, as Hydra pushes in, should be enough to close out the series. GG! Really, really nicely done by Hydra there to take that one three to one. Really turning the series on its head. Capitalizing on the mistake in game number two, taking a quick win in game number three, and then a long, drawn-out one. Just really, really smart play by the Korean Zerg. Yeah, that was a series that really got away from a laser very early on after a, a phenomenal start by winning game one and the great start that he had in game two. And then that final map really showed some, some, some guts. He was in a good spot right up until he got caught. But uh, let's hear from the man himself on stage with Red Eye. How you feeling, Hydra? Hydra, well done. Congratulations on a fine victory. 3-1. You are our final quarter finalist that makes it through to the semi-final. Explain exactly how it worked for you. Uh, after I was ahead of the first game, but after I lost that game, I was a bit frustrated. But 
after that it was just the game the whole game went just yeah as i planned okay and what about the final game elisa put up a great fight against you never never backing down always trying to stay alive yeah i actually never never played like this style but i just wanted to try new style that i haven't done so yeah it worked out pretty well for me are you are you thinking a little bit at 2-1 and being ahead in the game four? Are you thinking a little bit maybe I'm in the semi-finals? Don't want to give too much away. Uh, not really, but just I always try to as many strategies as I can. Yeah. All right, so semi-final tomorrow in the big arena, and you go head to head with Snoop. Thoughts? I heard Snoop. Uh, Snoop is Snoop prepares playing against me over you know two. Uh, Laser, yeah, and I prefer play against Snood to Wireless, so yeah, it's kind of fun. Should be a fun game, okay, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations to Hydra, he's our final man through to the semi finals. Sean, thank you very much, Red Eye, and congratulations to Hydra, who is our fourth player left in the tournament. It's been a fantastic couple of days, but let's talk a little bit about this series now before looking at the overall tournament, boys. Hydra. I mean, I was most impressed by that last game, though. I think his tech switches all over the place yeah. were, were top-notch, and they were the, that was the difference between the two of them. What do you think, Kev? No, I absolutely agree. Beautiful tech switches there, like, you know, squeezing out middle list whenever he could afford it. was very back and forth. It's one of those ZBZs, and you look at it, and, you know, we often joke about, like, ZBZ, ha, oh, boring. That last game was not boring at all. It was non-stop action. Great micro by both players, and yep. what I love as well is that Runes of Saros, it's a ridiculously big map with so many attack paths that it really allows you as a good player to make something happen. And so that's why we saw roaches all over the place, you know, tunnel and claw. We, we saw it all. It was just a really good back and forth game. But the, the first Muda switch helped Hydra a lot. Then he almost died because it's like, hey, I killed a bunch of drones. Now your army is bigger. Oh, God barely hang on, and then he switched into Mutalisk again later on, which I really think was extremely inc incredibly important at that moment. It's been a long day, guys. Because <laughs> uh, those Lurkers were starting to become very scary, and I mean, Lurkers just wreck everything on the ground, so I think the second Muta switch was even better than the first. Wow. It's, it's amazing how good Lurkers are in ZVZ. Sometimes you forget, and it, like, what was he, 50 supply down? They ended up yeah. if, even supply because of how well they were trading? Yeah. And uh, the old the old Musala switch twice in one game there. It was genius, actually, yeah. that switch. Yeah, thoughts here in control in this series? Uh, I like the, I mean, I think the bailing attack was pretty cool, actually. Yeah, yeah. He showed a lot of patience, which is, again, a mark of a very good player. A lot of players would be like, oh, no, I'm under attack now. I must go, even though the upgrade's nearly finished. We've seen that countless times, but not by players of the caliber of Hydra, so that was good to see. Uh, overall, the series was, you know, I mean, we were, we were hyped up on a laser. We've seen what Mana can do in front of the crowd, and unfortunately Hydra killed that motivation with just good play, which is great. We want to see, uh, of these guys, who's the best, and Hydra moving on to face Snoot. I think of the ZVZs we've seen, these are the two that have been perhaps most impressive without having seen your Chio's EVZ. We didn't see that, right? Nope, not yet. not yet. I also think it's important to show some more love to Hydra. I mean, we often talk about like how well they all the guys do and then Hydra advances. We're like, oh yeah, you know, Hydra, you played pretty well. But he actually played very well. I mean, yeah. he just defeated one of the best Zergs in Europe that has a ridiculous win record lately in CVZ. And what about that game on Pry and Terraces, man? Like it's double gold relatively early on. For Elaser, Hydra didn't panic, you know, he sang it out and just got a couple of very good engagements later on. That was also a very, very good game by him and uh, definitely not an easy win, you know. In the end, it's 3-1, yeah. it was well, very hard fought, I think, but still incredibly impressive that he just keeps on doing it, keeps showing up. And these guys, man, they're not being lazy right now, they're practicing very hard. Elaser extremely motivated, in excellent shape, but Hydra was still proven to be a little too good, and that says a lot about how good Hydra truly is. Yeah, I mean, Hydra just uh, by far just dominating the WCS system last year. And it's uh, off to a good start so far this year. Obviously not the best of result at DreamHack, yeah. but this is really uh, where you want to be top four at the InTouch Stream Masters here in Katowice, get to play in the Spodek Arena. Uh, that's it done so far, but let's check in with the bracket one last time for today. As you can see here, 32 players down to just four. Paul Nurcio in the first semi-final tomorrow, Snoot versus Hydra in the second. Korean versus non-Korean and twice over. 
I mean, it's very good at Hydra's in the semi-finals because his space is on like 20,000 banners that are hanging around the <laughs> academy, which yeah. so would have been very sad. Like, what happened to that guy? I lost in the round of 32, you know? Like, that would have been bad. But uh, I think really cool semi-finals. Not going to lie, as a Protoss player myself, obviously always sad that there is no Protoss because, you know, you're always yeah, yeah. a tiny bit biased towards your race. But, I mean, Nurcho against Bolt, I think it's going to be awesome. Snoot versus Hydra, no idea who's going to take it, but it should be good. Yeah, it's uh, a great top four there, Maynard. You've got a Terran to cheer for? I do indeed. Uh, I mean, I just want good games, and I think that I'm wow. sure... Wow, well, <laughs> you just went there. Oh. I did. No, I did. I yeah. did. Um, I actually am looking forward to both series. TVZ is my favorite matchup, so yeah, I'm obviously looking forward to Polt Nurcio the most, but Snoot Hydra is also going to be pretty amazing, so I, I mean, you can't really ask for anything better at the moment. Uh, I guess a Protoss player. Yeah, you can ask for Protoss. Maybe too <laughs> even, you know, one race has to be represented twice, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for all your hard work today and over the last couple of days. That's it for us done for day three of the Intel Stream Masters. Once again, a shout out to the scoreesports.com and plays.tv for creating the highlights. Well, if you guys may be creating them, thank you to you guys uploading the highlights on plays.tv throughout the last couple of days. And we're going to be seeing you tomorrow live from the Spodek Arena. We're going to have a lot of fun there, and I hope you guys will be joining us tomorrow. We'll see you then.